Hey there, fellows. I expect this one to be incredibly fun. We've actually already done some crazy stuff with washing machines before, but the last time we did, we had a couple of them on our hands. One of those we utterly trashed, but we still have one left over. So an idea occurred to us. Why not join a washing machine together with a car? Make a washing machine with an internal combustion engine, driven by a motor, and then proceed to use it as intended. We will have to blow it up, so we need to stick something in there like... Last time we tried washing a carburetor and some other similar stuff, but this time we'll find something a bit more substantial. Okay, so first we put something together, and then we see what comes out of it. Let's do this. Fitting a car engine to a washing machine and spinning it up in fifth gear. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Okay, fellas, here is where we're at with this. We removed the motor from those remnants of car we had, and after that we were like, let's hook it up directly. Just like I suggested, connect the drums straight to the engine's crankshaft. And at that point we started arguing. Here's how they changed my mind. So the guys asked whether I have a washing machine at home, and I'm like, yeah. How many speeds can you set? And I'm like, I don't know, it does that by itself. And they were like, let's get this to work the same way. I decided not to argue, and so we left the gearbox attached and connected it to the washing machine via an axle shaft. So yeah, we've got that aspect covered. And if you want to dry your shit with maximum efficiency, throw it into fifth and away you go. I decided to leave it at that. After all, this might be even more fun. In any case, this is what we're looking at. What else? Well, there's the obvious matter of hooking it all up. Here's how the clutch works. We decided to go with a lever. Keeping it simple, no pedals or additional levers. At first glance it all works quite well, though we haven't tried it yet. We'll put the throttle somewhere up here. In order to change gears we've got a shaft down there in the spot where we used to have a gear stick. All in all we're looking good. We just have to secure the washing machine itself get all of the supporting stuff up and running, the coils and everything else. Then we go outside and do some testing. Let's do this. Right, fellas, we've placed everything onto a trailer, since the entire assembly does weigh quite a bit. Anyway, what do we got here? Right here we have... A bit of detergent, and a few things that could use a wash. I'm a bit skeptical about the washing aspect of this. After taking a closer look, we noticed that someone nicked the heater. I'm also not sure about the powder detergent. I reckon that chemical canister used to contain more than enough powder. Something has to come out of this, right? Worst case scenario, even if we aren't able to successfully wash anything, we can at least give it a good tumble dry. Make absolutely no mistake. Okay, let's get to it. Who made this hatch so tiny? Great, now we close it. We add water through this thing right here. Hopefully it doesn't run out the back. It'll just spill onto the trailer, dude. 
Surely one canister won't be enough, though. It's already foaming. We haven't even started the machine yet. We have foam. What did I tell you? There's plenty of compound in here. We have leakage. Where? Where's the leak? Right here. It's the heater. It's the sensor, not the heater. We're running out of room in there. We're almost there. This washing machine, man. Imagine if you had this thing at home. You'd be chatting with the neighbors every day. Right, let's close this. We have foam in there, that's nice. Let's try first! That was first gear. Easy. Come on now. Look at it go. Is it doing its job okay? I can let go of the clutch. It's picked up some revs, not bad. What's the matter? Why doesn't it run without the butterfly? Wanna place it onto the ground? Oh yeah, that's much better. It works. I don't quite understand which lever does what, though. And when to use them. There we are. That right there is second gear. It works nicely in second gear. Though I am taking it easy. Such a wonderful machine. Damn. It's all good, but something seems to be broken. The throttle came loose. Washing machines do go back and forth, so let's try reverse. Now the other way. That's first. First gear. Throw it into reverse. It works, everything is good. So check this out. You need two people to operate it. Ideally three even. You need to change direction a few times, which is something that can drive you crazy, but, well, we need some kind of reverse facility. In any case, it does work. It does jump around and shake a bit, but nothing severe. We need to get that rag soaking wet, like through and through. Then we throw it in, engage fifth gear, and dry it out, like do it properly. All right, loading it in. That'll do. Now we put it into spin mode. Fantastic. Let her rip. You want to close the hatch? No, I do not. Let's leave it open. You know what? We are about to spin it up. Just throw it into fifth gear, man. 
Сейчас мы сразу. We're gonna dive right into this head first. All right, now we try fifth gear. Spinning it up. Okay, that's fifth gear. What's wrong? Something seems to be off. We are done. That's it. The CV joint popped out and here we are. The retainer wasn't able to hold on. What have we got here? What happened down here? Oh, wow. Well, that doesn't bother me. But this is dry at least. Don't believe me? Feel it for yourself. It's ready to put over an armchair. Fantastic. Okay, but this isn't so great. I see some dirt. And that's because the counterweights have fallen apart. That counterweight grenaded and found its way into the drum somehow. That's probably why the shaft popped out, due to an increase in load. I mean, to spin up such a heavy mechanism, we saw how in fifth the engine was barely even spinning. We couldn't get it up to maximum revs. It was genuinely having a hard time. Though you'd think that such a tiny drum, even with a few things in there weighing about four to five kilos, the motor was already stressed out. Regardless, it was working. I see a few bolts. I take it these were securing the counterweight. Here it is. All of this was inside. And yeah, the drum has a dent in it. Okay, so while this thing is still functional, in keeping with our tradition, we need to finish it off. I remember we washed a carburetor in that washing machine. Somebody just had to close it. There we are. I've got it open. So in keeping with our tradition, I'll go ahead and place the carburetor inside. We'll keep the hatch open. If the carburetor flies out somewhere, we need to see which way it's heading, right? The hatch would definitely get in the way of that. Or maybe we should close it. Are you guys scared? It'll be fine. Right, the carburetor is inside. Now we put the box into a one-to-one -one ratio gear and go full blast. Let's do this. Okay, so it rotates this way. God knows which way it's going to shoot out. Eh, screw it. <laughs> That's idle. Come on now. Come on already. Holy cow. That was an unexpected turn of events. Oh, right, did you see what brand washing machine we've got? These guys guarantee quality. Which is why we aren't able to destroy it. Well, I'll be. What do we got? 
It looks a bit hacked up. See that? Apparently it got caught. It crushed the grid, ripped it apart. Then it got caught on something. And I take it it was scraping on the external casing of the drum. Don't use a washing machine to clean your carburetor. Right, there's already a piece of concrete in there, correct? Yep. It happens. There we are. Ah, screw it. Let's throw this in there too. Time to fire it up. Oh, hey, it just popped out of gear, for God's sake. <laughs> Looks like we're done. Yeah, the washing machine is toast. It is completely trashed. Oh, shouldn't have done that. It is really hot. That's what a friction does. Always bear physics in mind, fellas. So what do we have inside? The drum is completely rooted. These guys do ensure proper quality, and with good reason. I was expecting the drum to fly out, since all of the counterweights came loose. These were some pretty heavy pieces of concrete. But all of that came undone. <laughs> All right, I'd say this delightful experiment has reached its logical conclusion. The washing machine is no more, which shouldn't come as a surprise. As a matter of fact, this couldn't have gone better. The engine is good, plus the entire system that we put together to get that drum to spin, it made it through to the very end, though we did decide not to weld the diff, and as a result, we secured the short axle shaft allowing the long one to rotate. It did pop out at one point, but a few additional welds helped us fix that problem. So while we've got this setup going, well, this part is definitely done for, but since we do have the engine mounted on a sort of jig, we could think of something else to do. Let us know in the comments what we could hook up instead of a washing machine. Doesn't matter. Whatever comes to mind, go ahead and share it. And we're gonna make it happen. Keep the ball rolling one way or another. In the meantime, that's all I have for you. We're looking at a 107% success rate here. An internal combustion engine driven washing machine works just beautifully. <laughs> you guys watch us, subscribe, send in your comments, suggestions and requests, give us a big thumbs up. Alright, catch you later.